Good morning. Um, I am Junichi Wekawa, and uh, welcome to everyone who has dared to wake up in the morning after the long sauna session and come back to uh, talk on shared libraries. Usually, I am a Debian developer who maintains audio-related packages, and I'm interested in that kind of thing. But also, I've deviated from there to QA and other things, including pBuilder and library packaging guide. I would like this both session to be where I kind of finalize the shared library packages guide, which I have been playing with about like the last three years. And I would like to present you a tutorial on shared library packaging. Well, shared library packaging has been, for the last century, it was a cabal mastery where only the cabals could do, and a newbie developer could not ever do any shared library packaging because it was uh, something very cable. And that's uh, going to change with the shared library packaging guide, which emerged in this century, and we have a century of liberated shared library packaging. <laughs> okay, so who I am? I'm uh, mainly doing audio and distributed computing and Debian quality main maintenance and some localization in Japanese. And I am not a hardcore shared library package maintenancer, but I do maintain a few shared library packages. And I hope um, the, and I have been picking up on shared library topics for like, like past three years on the things that were discussed in Debian Devel, and I'll, I would like to convey to you the results. Okay, so that was the last century. It was the cable forging shared libraries. There are people who have just randomly building packages, and they said, when asked, how do you create shared libraries, master? And he would just say, hey, you're too young, just go on and find something else to do. Um, and in the past, shared library packages were very much named in an ad hoc basis. They were, there was not much very, very much rules in naming them. They were, uh, most were named lib something zero, without any regards to whether the sole name was zero or something. And, that kind of had to change when, with the introduction of GNOME and GTK, where they had to change the soul name so often. And they made the soul name so long and complex that we had to have some kind of system to maintain them. Okay, and uh, I would like to talk about the background knowledge. I hope everyone knows this by now, but uh, source code is built by GCC. How many people not knew that? Great. Okay, so we are on the same ground. And GCC outputs some kind of uh, assembly and gas, processes it to make an object. An object is processed by LD to create an executable file. And in this, we have this operating system called called Debian GNU Linux, which supports shared libraries. Um, did you know that? Great, okay. So we have an executable, but that is not actually complete. We need the shared libraries linked to the executable to be run at runtime. So what happens is that there's the funky thing called ld.so, which collects all the shared libraries when executable is started, and kind of relocates everything, and you have a complete executable file. And you, you have a binary running. So the problem and background of the problem is that you don't really know what shared libraries are linked to and what kind of symbols are loaded until you actually run the program. So that's the lovely thing about shared libraries. Okay, 
And I would like to mention a little bit about Shared Library Package Guide and its history. It was started in 2002 as a response to go back, you're too young to share, package shared libraries. And well, there were many problems. And I was watching Debian bugs this mailing list, and there were many problems happening, like uh, missing symbols in shared library who. Um, uh, this binary crashes when shared library package upgrades, that, that kind of problems. And I collected references to the bug reports and kind of categorized them into a list and added comments on how to avoid that situation. And that's how shared library packaging guide evolved into the current shape. Um, and uh, it has been going on uh, for the last three years because there are things which change. And uh, I hope it's been useful to few people. Uh, how many people actually read Shared Library Packaging Guide? Oh, great. Thank you. How many people actually used it? <laughs> OK, nice. Uh, how many people actually hate it? Oh, OK. That was a trick question. <laughs> OK. And um, in the three years that, hap that with the Shared Library Package Guide, there are some events, like uh, we had a large, larger scale introduction of virgin symbols into Debian. Uh, virgin symbols wasn't very much used at the beginning. It was only, probably only used in glibc. And I think it's coming mainline that debugging symbols in separate objects is become mainline, I don't know. And people introduced pre-linking. So there are a few things that changed while library packaging guide is being evolving, and it's not actually catching up yet. And the problems with uh, shared libraries can be summarized as uh, keeping a stable API and using DL open and the implications of dynamically loading shared libraries and coexisting multiple versions. Because when you have multiple versions of shared library, you have to know which version to load and which version actually works with the shared library. And I think the remaining things that <laughs> needs to be done with the library packaging guide is to be, um, there needs to be some policy documentation. So reflect things back to policy on how to name development packages. Uh, how many people know that it's actually you don't really have, really have a rule for naming development library packages. Because there, there actually isn't a, a set rule, and you don't really have a guideline, except for the li library packaging guide. Um, and it would be nice if there was a dev helper like uh, tool for shared libraries. How many people is maintaining shared library and thinking, think that a dev helper does not do enough work for me. OK, um, because Dev Helper doesn't really do too much work. It's, it does some, but not everything. And uh, I've hacked a tool called DShilips, which does more work, but it's not going into Dev Helper yet, or maybe never. And, uh, Currently, how, how many people is maintaining shared library using version symbols? OK. Uh, how many, do, don't you think that you have to do too much typing and updating? Yeah? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, there's too many to do. So I think it's, because it's something routine, routine work, you have, you have to do every time. So it should be simplified. And that's the topics. Are there any questions there regarding to the topics? I would like to just jump into a tutorial on making a shared library, because I don't think there are many tutorials on how to make shared library using autoconf, auto make, and libto. And, and this is a very short tutorial. And if you want to make a shared library, it's very nice. And I will distribute. Uh, table of this example code. 
It's very small, so it will be nice to see. Um, if you have configure.ac, start with these components. Um, if you're doing autoconf, you have to start with AC in it, and well, you probably want some of them, the automate initialization. And you need to add the AC prop libto to add check for libto. And that's it. Um, you have some, some things missing from the below, but that's generated by default, so it's not much problem. And if you have makefile.am, you have uh, libLT libraries, which is a libshare.la. Um, you specify the name of the lib2 archive file, which is in the extension of .la. And that will, by lib2, be uh, that's the name you give to lib2, and lib2 will create the .so files and .a files. And if you specify to automate that libLT libraries is libshare.la, that means Automate uh, will try to make libshare.la. And you specify the flags you give to the automate on the second line, libshare.la LD flags. And you specify the versioning information. The obvious and basic version you can start off with is 0, colon, 0, colon, 0. And that that'll be that create a uh, share libraries dot so dot zero dot zero dot zero. And you probably specify the include directories. And uh, you probably have a header file to specify as your prototype for the library. And you have the lib shared sources list, which is the list of sources for the shared library. And how many people are used to automake? OK, only about half. So um, it would be useful to say that um, when it says lib shared, you can replace it with your shared library name. It's not something stuck. And uh, you have this makefile.am, and you may run automake and autoconf, and you make a configure script and make files. And there are a few things that are controversial in this make file, and that is uh, use of uh, release and version info. Release and version info makes different kinds of so names. And uh, version info is more of a conservative one. And release gives a very different approach that it makes a different so name for every release you give. And if you're doing some very new project, it might be easier to just use release because your so name grows so often and you really don't bother with compatibility. And for uh, version info, the first number is the most important, so be careful to change it when you're actually changing the shared library interface. And when you have the source code, you can have the source code write your functions, which are going to be shared as a shared library. And the header file should define the declarations. OK, any questions on the order comfort to make? That was all I have for the order comfort and order make. So upstream source code, yes? Just a nitpick, really. Uh, your example mm -hmm. of auto autoconf.ac file, it uses the old uh, syntax. It works perfectly, but there's a newer syntax that Works a bit better, but oh uh, yes, just that. It is a newer syntax, and uh, I wanted to know the newer syntax rather than the oh. old syntax. I'll, I'll talk to you later then. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll repeat if you. Thanks for the tutorial that I would have liked to have had it when I started building shared, like, and maintaining shared libraries. And at least now, people are not going into the same try to find things that I went through. And a question about using dash release. I have never seen it, so I'm interested, especially because I maintain very fast changing libraries. But if that hooks the so name to the version of the library, does it, doesn't that mean that the, lib the binary package has to go through new every time I, I upload a new version? Um, yes, it does mean that. Okay. And uh, that's the problem. People try uh, to avoid it by not changing the package name, but that's not really a good solution. So we actually have a problem, oh, well, a, a problem I really care about. I stopped making shared libraries because of this problem, and I do all static, and it's a nightmare anyway. Yes, a static is uh, currently a better solution because we have a overhead at FTP master for changing package names. So it's not, you know, that's a problem with the Debian infrastructure and how we organize things. So, um, The thing is that um, for new emerging libraries which changes interfaces, one recommended action is to use uh, release option and change the sole name every release <coughs> so that um, you would change the package binary, binary package name and require every package to be rebuilt against a new shared library. But that means that it, will, it is more work for FTP master. And that is one problem I'm seeing us. And I'm not sure how to solve that. Yes. I have a question. Are there any automated tools to check that you haven't accidentally changed the ADI or something? Um, well, of course, we should pay more attention to that kind of thing. Yes. Um, So Brandon suggested there was an uh, tool called iCheck by uh, Asset Field. Nice. And uh, that can be used for ABI checking. Yes? Um, the question was that if I could explain the three numbers in the versioning, um, they have some meaning, but I don't really much care about them. <laughs> so I don't really know. Um, the, one, the first one is some major version or something, and the, the other is uh, age and something to specify that you have compatible interfaces for several versions. But um, I'm not quite sure if you're really able to maintain that kind of detailed information if you're striving to work out what kind of ABI is stable or not. So it's not really practical or useful, in my opinion. It's too difficult. Yes? Someone was doing a really neat work, uh, utility that detected all our bait changes automatically. So we could use that uh, with uh, an automated degree of mm. certainty. Uh, the first name is the the first number is the full ABI number. The second is the minor revision, and the third is the last time you broke the uh, the ABI. It subtracts them in a weird way and generates the user increase only when things break backwards. Numbers we are using for LD.SU. It works really well. After you read about 20 pages of money info about how to use that. Okay. 
So that was a question answered. Okay, so I've discovered that there is an ABA checker, and that's nice to hear. Pardon? Oh, it's not finished. So it's not unfinished ABA checker, which could <coughs> appear very soon. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I will explain about Dish Labs tool, which I have been I have written as an example implementation of what is written in shared library packaging guide. I think it's used by a few people, not many. Uh, but in, it breaks sometimes, but it's mostly working. The goal of these shellets is to facilitate the use of the output of object dump on a binary. The ELF headers of a binary, the, of the shared library, has enough information so that we can extract the Debian control, the required information for Debian control to be extracted from a shared library. And really, it should be automated in, that, in such a way that uh, Debian control doesn't have to be sort of uh, synchronized by hand to the, what the shared library, shared library itself is. So it's one way of going. And what it does is that it looks at the .so file, and with a set magic, it creates a shared library package name and the development package name. And checks for Debian control so that the package names match. And it also generates a list of, uh, from the list in the needed section of the shared library package, you can find that the share library package which this needs and create construct a list of development packages it should probably depend on and create a devlis depends just like the shellips depends and it's been maintained for 3 years and can i advertise it now and the guts of the devlis these shellips is that uh, you have a you check the Debian control is matching what it says on the .so file. And it will also do the moving around of files, which you will usually do manually in your DH install or dev helper script. So, and it will create the list of dependencies on dev depends. So, the Development library dependency, which you might be doing manually, is somewhat automated. There are weaknesses in DHLibs in that it depends on the shared library packages and development library packages being named in a consistent manner. So it would be better if we had a policy on how to name them. Okay, um, is there any questions on DHLibs? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so okay. <laughs> um, for all of the sh uh, shared library packages that I've had anything to do with over the years, which is mostly exclusively stuff related to the X-Window system, um, I've gotten into the habit uh, after what Ben Collins did with glibc of adding a dash uh, dbg or debug version mm -hmm. of the uh, shared library, which is unstripped and placed in the in user lib debug. Um, does dshulibs uh, have support for helping people do that automatically as well? Um, actually, it doesn't have support for that currently, and I'm working on it. And I'm working on the uh, the split debug symbols. Oh well, yeah, support. we should. Yeah, we should be able to have those with GDB now, shouldn't we? Yes. So um, the, the yeah. nature of debug pa debug library packages will change. Yes. Okay. And I was thinking of, because debug packages are different packages, I I was thinking it would be, might be better just dump it into dev packages, because it would create too many packages for shared library. 
Yes, I know the archive maintainers are concerned about what yeah. would happen if everybody shipped an unstripped <laughs> debugging shared library. So they yeah. haven't given me too much trouble, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, if everybody did it, uh, you know, GNOME and KDE, mm. things would start to become pretty large. So uh, do you know what the status of the split uh, debugging symbol support is generally? No, I have no idea. Any, does anyone know about the sta status? Okay. So that's that's the kind of thing I think we should you know try to get moving on early in the edge cycle so that we can have a chance of having something uh, you know complete by the time we release. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yep. What's the merit of using uh, object dump uh, uh, instead of LDD? Um, as opposed to LDD, object dump gives you the SO name field, which I want. And uh, for the needed things, um, instead of LDD, I am using object dump because it will miss the indirect dependencies. And I don't want everything to be there. But uh, LED print out the uh, the exact path name for the current build environment. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the package shell the devs using uh, uses a. Uh, uh, LDD, so it's a nice way. How about this idea? Okay, so um, the idea is to use LDD for the full path and find the package names which contain the full path. But uh, actually what they point to is the name of the runtime shared library packages, not the development packages. So we don't, the main problem is that we don't really know which development package is connected to the shared library packages. They may be created from the same source package, but we don't really know. And we don't have a naming rule which in, is enforced to mechanically determine. Mm -hmm. So that's one problem, and it's not improved by using LDD over object dump. Yes? Well, for consistency's sake, shouldn't we have that anyway? We should try and have you know, a simple rule that somebody can find the name of the, uh, the dev package. I, I don't think there's any good reason for not yeah. having the dev package have a different name to the, to the library. Unfortunately, I, I think most people do this, but we have one uh, particular legacy package which gives us a bit of trouble, and that's called uh, libc. <laughs> because it's named different things on different architectures, and uh, it, it can be kind of tricky to deal with. Well, uh, I think uh, it would be a good time after more than 10 years of Debian development, it might be a time to agree on naming of the development library packages. <laughs> I mean, we've been going for on for more than 10 years. Yeah, maybe time. Okay. Um, yeah. I want to talk about version symbols. Uh, you have to write a script like that and maintain it yourself. Uh, it's, it's not too bad, but uh, do you really have to do it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the comment was that, uh, oh, okay. Well, uh, official support on lib2 would help sending things upstream, and version symbols is the kind of thing you want to be equal everywhere, so upstream is the, really pl the real place to have it done. Mm. I had the upstream of some widely used uh, libraries such as Cheetos as uh, Cheetos, S A S L tell me that they would accept version symbols upstream only if Lib2 supported it. Mm. 
Sådan vil. Okay. But I really would like if it's there's like a tool. I mean, it looks like we can really automate it, generating this script. So it might be nice to just hack on some script. Yes. Well, I, I could, from looking at that now, I could imagine about 10 line shell script to create it. So it should be simple. Um, yeah. Okay, um, yeah. We had problem with the, GNOME had initially had problems with having multiple development versions of shared libraries. Um, having, they solved the problem with uh, having <laughs> PKG config scripts to find the path to exact version of the shared libraries. How many people actually have the mastery of writing PKG config scripts? Okay, not many. <laughs> Um, it should be simple looking at the examples. You can find usually package config.pc, but uh, I don't really know how to write them. So it'd be very nice if you could sort of <laughs> give me some clue if I can include it in library packaging guide. That might help or some pointer. So oh. oh, another thing I would like to note of uh, as in shared library is that uh, the internationalization is uh, slightly different because you need to use the get text instead of get text. And that's because uh, you're a shared library. You can be called from any program. And that any program may set any domain when you're calling. So you have to set your own domain when you're calling your calling get text to get the text. Um, how many people actually don't have a clue what get text is. Okay. Um, don't? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> uh, please, please uh, it will be uh, very much of an advantage for everyone if you learn to use get text. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I tried to test get text. Uh, get text dies, but uh, yesterday it didn't work very well, so I'm not sure <laughs> how to do it actually. Okay. Um, okay. And as a feature of my work, I'm considering of uh, still maintain, continuing to maintain share library packaging guide, maybe add it to the Debian talk. And it is written in uh, docbook XML, and it is a guide that it is also a torture test for XML two chains, <laughs> like uh, XML editors. And yes, and if you have any problem, please let me know so that I can include it to share library packaging guide. It's getting like a nice portal for people working with shared libraries so we can get information there. It's kind of central information. And as with uh, Debian, it's very big. It's very, there's, everything's open. Everyone communicates. But we don't know how to get to the information. So I, I like the way that shared library package guide is somehow, well, I'm doing it, but it came out like this. And if you have the motivation, it would be very nice if you could do it for your own pet projects so that people will benefit from it. I mean, Debian, yes. Oh, I, mean, I, had a uh, I had a comment to make. Yes. But, uh, uh, first of all, I found the, uh, the, packaging, the library packaging guide to be very useful and enlightening. Okay. And I was wondering if uh, to increase its visibility, why not include it as part of like the uh, new maintainer's guide or some other you know, documentation? I think we have too many little pieces of documentation everywhere you know, that are hard right. to find sometimes. So it would be better to like 
have like one maybe Debian developer's guide or something that covers everything. Yeah, or the developer's reference to, you know, some more visible location. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's already referred to in developer's reference, so it's, it's good enough. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was about to make the same comment in a different way. I was about to ask you, yes. is lib PKG guide easy to translate? Uh. Do you consider converting it to PO format? Um. You know, XML is not easy to translate. I consider. Um, the reason I'm not tr I've not translated into Japanese yet is that I don't have a good working Japanese tool chain to translate it, uh, to get Japanese text into PDF and other kind of thing. So, um, it's a usual uh, format, like DocBook, uh, like Debian Doc. So, it's same. And for PO format, I don't like working with PO formats with uh, large documentation because they yeah, kind I of reorder things. And yeah, that's so what some mean. translators also don't use a PO format for XML translation. But it may help to, to maintain, actually, more easily. Uh, but <laughs> post a, for a call for translation and make it m more visible. Actually, it's a part of making it more visible. If you include it in developer's reference, it will be more visible and it will be translated actually. So it's about the same comment than Java. Okay. <coughs> or at least try to get it into the Debian doc uh, infrastructure, which is already available. Actually, there's already a directory in Debian doc infrastructure. There's no make file because I haven't figured out how to build it. <laughs> well, I haven't got around to it yet. I guess um, if you're going to visit Frank's talk, uh, which is going to happen as next, um, about the website uh, roundtable. It might be possible to discuss this sort of problem there. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Any further questions? <coughs> okay. Okay. Um, so the time is up? Almost. Up. Almost up, okay. Um, thank you for hearing this talk. Um, I would really like this kind of FAQ, kind of policy, kind of document to be more maintained in Debian. It's very useful everywhere. So um, everyone, hack on, but write documents also, please. Thank you. Thank you very much.